Just so you know, this show is about scary stuff. So don't say I didn't warn you guys. And remember, don't be scared. Episode 57, Valentine's Day. War Baby here with another episode of Murderous Miners. It's February 28th and for the third time in 2020 America, a teenaged boy stands accused of killing his mother and sibling. On February 14th, 2020, 17-year-old Leviathan Henry Norwood allegedly shot and killed his mother and six-year-old brother Wyatt in Midland, Virginia. Currently unknown is the motive or how Levi obtained the weapon. Any firearms belonging to the Norwood family were reportedly kept locked in a gun safe. Levi and Wyatt's 37-year-old father, Joshua Norwood, was first to discover the heart-wrenching scene in his home, and he spoke to the Washington Post just days after the tragedy. Not only did he recount the events of that day there, but he also left several public comments on local paper Fockier Times website, which were even reported on by Fox 5 DC. According to Joshua Norwood's accounts, he arrived home just before 6 p.m. on Valentine's Day after stopping by a store to pick up flowers for his wife, Jen Overlock Norwood. The pair married in 2002 after meeting at his high school job at a pet store in the state of Maine. She was 16 years old. Josh said they named their first son Leviathan for the couple's favorite pet snake, calling it, quote, a strong name, something unusual. The family left Maine for Virginia about six years later, and youngest son Wyatt was born there about four years after that. Jen loved being a mom, and Josh said, quote, She was very protective of both our boys. Our boys grew up in a loving household. We told our boys we loved them every day. We were a regular family. He spent time with his sons, teaching Levi outdoorsmen sports like fishing and hunting. The pair practiced shooting at a nearby range, and Josh was even teaching little Wyatt the way around a firearm. Friday, February 14th, 2020 began as though it would be a regular day. Levi was currently grounded from his cell phone as punishment for lying. He had seen his girlfriend after school while telling his parents he was doing schoolwork. They weren't supportive of the relationship, and Levi was reportedly noticeably sad and suffering a decline in academic performance. Levi's classmates at Liberty High School in Bealton, Virginia, where he was a junior, said when interviewed that his girlfriend made him the happiest he had been in some time. One of Levi's friends since elementary school told the Washington Post that he had been friendly to everyone back then, but had grown sullen in middle school. High school was better, though, he said, once Levi found a solid group of friends and started dating his girlfriend last year. Josh said he took his son driving out to Richmond so he could qualify for a license on February 9th. He recalled that they had a good time and were laughing. The week of February 10th, 2020, saw some classmates noticing that Levi was edgy. He had dyed his hair purple like many teens do nowadays, and his friend said when another friend touched it, Levi got out of his seat and said, quote, If you touch my hair again, I will dislocate your jaw. His dad even said online that, quote, I told him if anyone messes with him because of his purple hair, I'd take care of them. Though some speculate that this was a cry for help or attention, another longtime friend pointed out that Levi had dyed his hair before, showing up with it a blazing neon green. He told the Washington Post, quote, Honestly, I saw him this week and he seemed perfectly fine. He seemed like nothing was wrong. But clearly something was wrong. The morning of Valentine started out well. Jen texted Josh to say their boys were cuddled up on the living room love seat together before school. Wyatt had spoken to Josh's mom that morning too, asking his grandma if she could accompany Jen to have lunch with him at school but she promised that she would the next time. 
Jen actually had both breakfast and lunch with Wyatt at Mary Walter Elementary on Valentine's Day, and others there recalled that they were so sweet together before she left so he could finish out his school day. These were the thoughts fresh in his mind as Josh Norwood approached the family home just prior to 6 p.m. that Friday. According to his own account, he got home just in time for dinner, coming up to his door expecting little Wyatt to be there to greet him as he usually was. The curtains were all drawn, he noticed, as he went through his front door to give his family their gifts. He wrote in the comments on FuckYourNow.com, quote, I opened my door and before my work bag hit the floor, I was shot in the head. Not realizing what happened until I saw blood pouring out, I then searched for my family and found Jen and Wyatt dead. Josh told the Washington Post that he was sliced by a bullet across his forehead which seemed to come from the direction of the home's basement. Through his bloodied vision, he could see two things. First, his older son Levi's door was open and his bedroom light was on, though he was not in sight. No member of his family was, and Josh said he ran next to what he thought was a pile of blankets, out of place on the living room floor. Underneath, he found his wife of 18 years lying face down in her own blood. On the love seat where Wyatt and Levi had snuggled just that morning, Josh lifted another blanket and discovered the body of the six-year-old boy he referred to as his chunky baby. He fired one shot from his personal firearm toward his basement as he fled, flagging down a passing vehicle and contacting 911 at 5.59 p.m. to report that he had seemingly lost his entire family. At this time, we have possibly the mother and the son are deceased. The other one is in the house. The one who did the shooting and in the collar is a father. He has an eye injury, we believe, and then also his hand. I believe he's going to be a 17-year-old male. His name is Levi. Josh had no idea where his oldest child was as he ran for his life. Local authorities took presumptive action and created a perimeter around the property, shutting down Elk Run Road and surrounding streets. Police acted as though he had barricaded himself in the home, since they had no evidence to the contrary. It was another four hours before the property was secured, and investigators were able to determine it was safe enough to secure the bodies and the crime scene. The Virginia State Police and FBI aided through the night as an intense manhunt began. All three of the victims suffered upper body trauma, and uh, in this situation we were able to learn that uh, the suspect, uh, Levi, was armed with a, with a pistol. We are looking for Levi Norwood, who is 17 years old, and uh, he is the one that's reported to have been the shooter inside this incident, so he is the suspect in the case. Levi himself, uh, he's uh, approximately five foot nine, and he's been known to change his hair color. Helicopters, drones, and tracking dogs diligently tried to hunt Levi down as the surrounding residents were ordered to shelter in place as the search roared on. Open fields, sheds, Barns and wooded areas were scoured and a door-to-door -door canvas of the neighborhood was initiated. Ultimately, a bloodhound tracked Levi over a 10-mile zigzagging course through the woods, outbuildings, and along Route 28, ending near Crockett Park off Rogues Road. He had traveled a distance of five miles as the crow flies, circling and looping his way to the residence of people he had no connection to and seemed to select at random. Walked inside. And that's when I realized that the car was missing. He actually drove the car around, hit the desk, hit that table, and drove out. A, a shocker. Murderous Miners is brought to you by Best Fiends, the unique and exciting puzzle experience that I run to when I need to take a break. I'm currently on level 434, changing light bulbs, breaking ice blocks, and blowing up cherry bombs, and there's no better way to get the quick mental palate cleansers that I need through the day. There's always new characters and features to unleash, and it's upgraded every month with new levels and events. Honestly, Best Fiends treats the game like a service for their players, so it never gets old. The vibrant colors and ever-changing landscape of the game keeps the blood flowing to my brain while at the same time calming my nerves. Engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters. 
Trust me, with over 100 million downloads, this five-star rated mobile puzzle game is a must-play. Download Best Fiends free on the Apple Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. The bloodhound had followed Levi sent to the home of a couple who had reported their red 2007 Toyota Corolla had been stolen at 7.30 a.m. on Saturday, February 15th. Roughly eight hours later, Levi was spotted in Durham, North Carolina. A loss prevention specialist at the Super Target just south of downtown Durham spotted the purple-haired teen in the sporting goods section just before 4 p.m. and suspected him of shoplifting. Durham police were notified and officers aware of a fugitive teen responded, but when they arrived, Levi tried to give them a false name. However, officers used a bulletin to identify him and he was taken into custody. Levi was attempting to shoplift hair dye, clothing, and a backpack, and was not armed at the time of his arrest. The red Toyota Corolla was located in the parking lot, and Levi had traveled about 230 miles since that morning. He was charged with two counts of murder and appeared before a judge soon after he was apprehended. Waiving extradition, North Carolina authorities prepared to transport both Levi and the stolen vehicle back to Virginia. Ten days after the Valentine's Day ambush, he appeared in court, back home in Fauquier County. The hearing had originally been scheduled to take place in the Family and Domestic Relations Court on Main Street. However, it was moved to the Circuit Court building on Culpeper Street due to security concerns. Just prior to the start of the hearing, the Washington Post filed a motion to intervene with the court so that Levi's hearing could be open to the public and the press. That motion quoted Virginia state law reading, quote, Hearings held on a petition or warrant alleging that a juvenile 14 years of age or older committed an offense, which would be a felony if committed by an adult, shall be open. The Post stressed that open proceedings would help the community heal, but Levi's public defender argued that this case has already been scrutinized in the media and that these murders are, quote, not a matter for public consumption. In the end, it was determined that the jury pool must be protected, as do underage witnesses who may be required to testify. The hearing was closed to the public, but if the case should move to adult court, that will likely change. As this case progresses through the system, and Josh Norwood grieves the loss of his entire family, we look to motive, since ultimately, that's why the public devours every detail of these cases. How can society hope to see signs and enact preventative measures if we don't know why these types of crimes occur? Though these murders have only recently taken place, several people who know the family, including relatives and Josh Norwood himself, immediately left comments on news articles online and spoke to the Washington Post and local news outlets. What we find here are multiple accusations of racial tension, which Josh Norwood addressed head-on. He's also said publicly that his oldest son wasn't taking any prescribed medications, but that his recent sad demeanor did prompt an appointment with their family doctor, but it was scheduled for the Monday following the shooting. One commenter posted on February 16th, quote, Is this the same individual that was investigated for threats at Liberty High School? To which Josh quickly responded, saying, quote, Mark, I am the father of Wyatt and husband of Jen. No, the murderer that was once known as my son was not investigated for threats. He was not known as a troublemaker and no red flags for us as parents to know otherwise this could have been prevented. I want no more comments like that, please, just memories of Jen and Wyatt. The following day, another commenter replied, saying, quote, He's made a bunch of threats at our school. He used to go around saying he was going to be a school shooter making jokes about it. He bragged about his dad being a neo-Nazi. It was reported to the school. Our teachers were told many times. He even threatened to bring a machete to school. Seriously, this is our school and the county allowed this to happen. To which Josh responded, quote, There were no threats made to the school by Levi and if there were, Jen and myself were never made aware. I am far from a neo-Nazi or anything like that, and if he was ever reported to have done or said these things, it would have been dealt with and this could have been prevented. 
the fact of the matter is my wife and child are gone.